Welcome to No Punt Intended, presented by Club Fantasy. Our Stars of Tomorrow series carries on. Last week, we were discussing the quarterbacks coming up in this draft class. We are ready to move on to the running backs, and I think it's fair to say this is maybe the least popular running back draft class we've seen in a very long time, but have no fear. Our guest, Jagger May from Football Guys, is here to help you find a guy or two that you might like in this draft. Let's get into it. Welcome to No Punt Intended, presented by Club Fantasy. I am your host, Ryan Weiss, as Joe Zolo takes yet another week off. But thankfully, Josh Hudson, back with me this week. How are you doing today, buddy? I'm just happy to be back on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys always have that opener? He hasn't had that last year, did you? Yeah, we did. We did have it did last you? year. We did, yeah. yeah. We just weren't paying attention. Chris B just noticed it for the first time too. <laughs> we, we get him over. We get him over here doing a show with us, and and he finally watches the the flagship show. The one that well, normally pay the bills. <laughs> normally you you have that th- like one minute to disassociate and gather yourself before it goes. <laughs> <laughs> We go right into the heat, baby. <laughs> we dive right into it. All gas, no breaks. That is our guest, Jagger May from Football Guys. Jagger, I think you did the running back episode with us last year as well. Yeah. And I got to tell you, this is consider this an honor because you are now only our second repeat guest ever. The other being Chrissy Freud, who talked quarterbacks with me last week. So Josh clearly thinks you did a great job last year, and we are just so happy to have you back. And plus... I've got to see all the great things you've done with football guys this past year because you joined football guys, I think, literally the same week after doing the show with us. (laughs) Yeah, it feels like it. Like like this whole season feels like a long week if you really (laughs) think about it. (laughs) Yeah. But no, we are are so glad to have you and so glad to talk these running backs. But I think before we dive into running back talk, there's a little bit of wide receiver news we have to discuss. As the Buffalo Bills have moved on from their very discontent wide receiver, Stefan Diggs. He is now a member of the Houston Texans with a 2025 second round pick being exchanged. Josh, what do we think about this move? Because I know you of all people that I know were the highest on Nico Collins coming in next season. And I feel like there's water being poured on that just all over the place right now. Yeah. I mean, it definitely hurts him a little for this year. Um, I think the biggest thing is that, when you look at how Stefan Diggs plays, how Tank Dell plays, how Nico Collins plays, they needed somebody that could really work those underneaths and create separation for the quick plays that can pull attention away from those deep balls that go Nico's way, that go Tank Dell's way. This truly just helps open up the offense. Stefan Diggs was one of the top three wide receivers in the NFL when it comes to third and fourth down receptions. And this is where the Texans struggled the most. So I think this really goes to show you that there's still a lot of growth left for Nico Collins. The man can get down the field, which is great. Now he's got to become a more complete wide receiver. If he can learn a little bit from Stephon Diggs, maybe that big pl- that big payday is in his future in Houston. But for now, this really is a one-year deal for Houston because they can get out of this deal pretty easily after 2024 if he doesn't make the type of impact that they need him to make. Jagger, when you look at this, I think everybody is the most excited about what it means for last year's Rookie of the Year, C.J. Stroud. He now has three weapons at his disposal who are ready to, uh, I guess, just tear the AFC South apart. Uh, What does this do for C.J. Stroud in in Dynasty? I don't know how much C.J. Stroud could have gone up. He was already QB5, you know? And, like, to me... Is he getting himself into the Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes range where he's just so safe and can put up numbers despite a rushing floor? Maybe, but it's it's hard for me to still put him ahead of Lamar because, like, granted, Lamar started slow, but, like, everyone forgets Lamar has white, excuse me, has QB1 upside week after week. So, like, am I excited for CJ Stroud? Yes, because. I love it when players I like get more help, but it's not, it, it's hard for me to 
rank him any higher. I can't. I mean, I like I can't. I can't, I'm, I can't put him above Mahomes or Josh, especially Josh Allen, because I just think Josh Allen's just going to run more. Like, okay. you know? <laughs> so you you hit the nail on the head of where I wanted to go with this is um, Stroud's treasure is Josh Allen's trash at this point. So this isn't yeah. hurting Josh Allen's fantasy prospects for you at all because you think it's just going to lead to a higher rushing upside. That and the wide receiver so deep in this draft that, you know, I, I just see them going and get another wide receiver. And they're clearly throwing a lot of noodles at the wall. If you've seen how their free agencies went, you know, with getting Curtis Samuel, Khalil Shakir already kind of was a bit better of a Stefan Diggs towards the tail end of last season. Whatever you think about them signing um, uh, Mac Hollins, I think that's a nothing factor for me, but, uh, you know. Uh, the, the Curtis Samuel, the Curtis Samuel and Khalil Shakir, I think are interesting, but I think they're going to need an alpha there. And like you said, this is a deep draft for them to go out yeah. and do. Josh, obviously, we're going to be talking wide receiver a lot next week. And you see them actively targeting a receiver, a guy who you have been more down on than most. And to be honest, everybody but me at Club Fantasy has been down slightly on Dalton Kincaid. Does this finally boost Kincaid? Do we think he takes that big step forward now that there's no Stephon Diggs? I mean, as of right think, now, you have to yeah, think so, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, I, mean, I mean, but I think his value is definitely someone that can fluctuate a lot, right? Right now, it's like, okay, there's nobody there. Dalton Kincaid, if I had Dalton Kincaid right now in Dynasty, I think I'm probably trying to move him because yeah. you have to think that they're going to either swing a deal for, I mean, who knows? Maybe they go out and try to try to grab Brandon Ayuk, right? He, he's up for a big contract extension. I'd rather pay a 25-year-old Brandon Ayuk than continue to pay a 30-year-old Stephon Diggs. So they can reallocate some of that money, right? I don't think they can probably swing a deal with Cincinnati for T. Higgins. So Ayuk, if they make a trade, would make the most sense. Otherwise, you're looking at going the draft route. And I think you could you could make a case for someone like uh, Brian Thomas Jr. out of LSU. Yeah. You could make a case for Adonai Mitchell out of Texas. Maybe they want to stick with the smaller route and they go with a Xavier Leggett or, or not Leggett, sorry, Xavier Worthy. Uh, Leggett could be an option in the second round, right? Kid out of uh, South Carolina. Yeah. Maybe they look for an all purpose guy like Corley. Um, there's a lot of different range yeah. of outcomes, I think, for the Bills. Josh has just named every secondary wide receiver in this entire draft that the Buffalo Bills may or may not be interested in. Before we move on, guys, I just want to give a quick little, you know, request for help we are at like 780 something subs on 792 792 on youtube right now we would love to get to 800 by the end of this show so i see a lot of new names in the chat we go live every single wednesday saturdays with mock drafts mondays with mock drafts we have a friggin' golf show if you're looking for fantasy information, you're going to get it here at Club Fantasy. So I would love if every one of you guys who's watching on YouTube could just hit that subscribe button. And if you're watching on Twitter, I think it's like an extra button you have to click and it'll just take you right over to YouTube. This isn't hard and we'd very much appreciate it. And I want to give a shout out. We got fantasy receipts in the building watching us over on Twitter. So uh, anything we say wrong here could could blow Ruh-oh. up in our faces. I was going to say, uh, I guarantee you I'm going to say some shit that's going to be fantasy receipts worthy. So uh, let's get into the running backs, guys. And Jagger, you were so kind as to give us your top 10 backs for this class, which I will now read off. You have Trey Benson at number one out of Florida State, Jonathan Brooks from Texas at two, Marshawn Lloyd, USC at three, Blake Corum from Michigan at four, Jalen Wright from Tennessee at five, Kendall Milton from Georgia at six, Cody Schrader from Missouri at seven. Uh, Ray Davis, Ramon, is it Ramon or Raymon? Because he's Ray. So, um, but Ray Davis from Kentucky at eight. Kamani Vidal from Troy at nine. And Audric Estime from Notre Dame at 10. So when we look this over, as I mentioned in the intro, Jagger, this is looked at as a weak running back class. Do you A, agree with that? And B, what makes Trey Benson the best of this class for you? It's weak because we don't have standouts and within tiers, you know, like we don't have a Jimmy or Gibbs. We don't have a Bijan Robinson where wherever they're going to go, they're probably going to be the RB one. We don't have that. Um, and Trey Benson is the closest to that. If that makes okay. sense. So to me, he's the only running back that fits the profile of an every down back that essentially I look at what is going to give Jerry Jones a chub and like Trey Benson <laughs> is like 
he fits like like a Jerry Jones would love him. You know, he's got the size, he has speed, he has pretty good tape. So, you know, Jerry Jones would make him because you know he has to have his running back. He's you know, he's got to have it. So, like to me, he fits the bill of that. Jonathan Brooks, the only reason why he's not in that category is he's injured. So I, you know, I could see a team who doesn't need him this year picking him up and he gets kind of a shitty draft spot. Um, or a, a landing spot, or he falls a little bit, and that makes the analytics bros squirm or something like that. So I could see that. And then, you know, when you get down to like Marshawn Lloyd, then you have the questions. I love Marshawn Lloyd, but Marshawn Lloyd has questions, you know, if that makes sense. John, yeah. uh, Trey, like, there was no questions about Bijan. There was very few questions about Gibbs. Before that, we had few questions about, you know, Kenneth Walker or something like that. All these other running backs, I don't think they're bad. They're just to say, like, how I graded these in film, almost all of these guys are within points of each other on score. It's okay. just like one giant tier. That's why I say it's not bad. It just matters more when and where they go. So if Benson's my- your top guy, Jagger, yeah. what do you think are some of the areas that he can improve upon most? Because I've seen a lot of people talk about like some indecisiveness when he sees a hole or you know not being able to get to the second level consistently. But when he does, he's one of the better backs in this class. I think he had the same problem most of Florida State had where the level of competition was really low. And I think a lot of I weren't saying they weren't they're not they're not playing like backyard, you know, bullshit. There was like running plays, but <laughs> they almost kind of were. Like if you look at everything outside of Keon Coleman besides his tape, and like Johnny Wilson, you're like, how the hell were they productive? And Trey Benson is a little bit um, in that category that I'm not saying he's not polished or anything like that, but when you don't have a stiff level of competition and I question a lot of the coaching, I don't think that you're going to perform as well because like the stuff like indecisiveness, Marshawn Lloyd has that, um, Jalen Wright at, in some cases, isn't like the strongest runner or, or whatever. But to me, his problems are very coachable and that matters for me. You know, whereas like, you know, you're talking about a wide receiver. If you can't run routes, I don't think that's very coachable. So, Yeah, I think it makes a sense. Uh, one of the things I noticed watching his tape is he is a hell of a pass blocker. And that's not yeah. something I saw come up for other people. So his ability to be a three down back it has to be something that's really going to scream to fantasy managers because we want players who are going to be on the field. Yeah. And and I, I don't see much downfield receiving work, but I mean, the guys who work downfield, they, there's no questions about the receiving ability. Again, the same guys we keep talking about, CMC, Jameer Gibbs, there was like the, their profile was receiving. Running was almost like a secondary afterthought out, outside of that. But other than that, I don't, I don't think he's bulletproof or anything like that, but I definitely think that he's a strong running back that can compete on any roster. Before we move on, you, had, you brought up the level of competition being a, a concern, if you will. To that same level, what worries me is he only had one 100-yard rushing game last year. Yeah. Is that just that they didn't need him? Like, it, it was just, it puzzled me because you see guys out there are constantly putting up 100-yard games, and I think he had four uh, in 2022, but only one last year. Is that a knock on him? Is that a knock on how Florida State used him? I think it's a knock on how Florida State used him because, uh, again, they were just chunking the ball. And, like, go get it, Keon Coleman. Go get it, Johnny Wilson. And if you – the high-profile game they had against LSU, you're like, well, oh, LSU's a good team. LSU's a good offense. They had one of the wor- – easily one of the worst defenses I've ever seen. Basically, when I um, when I uh, looked at their tape, I texted my other film guys. I'm like, is LSU as bad as, as they look? <laughs> like, yeah. And I think that extends throughout their whole schedule where – you know, some some coaches they're like Jim Har- Jim Har- or John Harbaugh. Actually, both of them, both the Harbaughs. Yeah, they'll run the ball. Both a thousand NFL times. coaches now. <laughs> yeah, they'll run the ball a thousand times. And then on the flip side, you got coaches who will just be like, "Hey, I have a pretty decent quarterback for college anyway, and I have two twin towers of wide receivers, and they can do this one job pretty well. Let's just throw it." So that that's what, and I also think they had a. They had to throw a lot because, okay. uh, like, I'm not. I know they look like an, an 
a really good team that got snubbed. But to me, again, level of competition and the fact that a lot of their games were a little bit more competitive than they should have been is where I think that Trey Benson kind of uh, falls through the cracks as far as the production goes. So you mentioned in kind of your breakdown of Trey Benson that he was the the only real like through three down back in this class. So you don't think there's any other workhorse type running backs in this class that can kind of be like do it all guys? No, I think that he is the one who is a proven three down back. I think Marshawn Lloyd's a three down back. He has size, speed, receiving ability. You know how much pass blocking he did? A whole lot because he was standing next to college football Jesus. <laughs> he has like very little production because like, you know, and, and you know, guys joke, they're like, you know, if they're good, they'll give him the ball. Okay. You know, he's probably pretty good, but he had Caleb Williams, you know. Yeah, it's just like, can I have one? No, not this time. You know, it's just <laughs> that's just what I think. And then um I think Blake Quorum can be a three down back, but he doesn't have the receiving profile. But again, I think it's that they Roman Wilson was their top wide receiver and he barely has a receiving profile. So that's just like, how can I judge Blake Corm too much, you know, for, for not getting touches when really no one was catching the ball a whole lot. Um, someone else, Kendall Milton is a little old and has injury issues. Ray Davis, Kamani, basically everyone after besides Jalen Wright, I think is a three down back. Uh, Jalen Wright, I think is a big, thick Devin a Chan or uh, Devon H. Han or um, Raheem Mostert, meaning that like he can go real zoomy, real straight, real fast. So it matters a little bit more. Everyone could be a three down back. It's just that I don't see it on tape. I don't see it in their analytics. So I'm only kind of um, really projecting, you know, and, and hoping and praying. Uh, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. You didn't mention him by name, but then you kind of said that everybody up to a certain point is a could possibly be a three down back. Jonathan Brooks, you didn't quite mention by name, but I think that has a lot to do with the injuries coming off of that late torn ACL. How effective do you think he's going to be able to be in 2024? Obviously, ACL surgeries have come a long way in the last 10 to 20 years. Do you think he could play a lot in 2024? And you, you've kind of already tied Trey Benson to Jerry Jones, but there's a lot of people tying Jonathan Brooks to Jerry Jones. Or do you think we're going to have to wait till 2025 to see the best of uh, Jonathan Brooks off of that injury? If anything, he could be like kind of like Brees Hall was a little bit where like he, he sucked because again, he's coming off an injury. Then he was really good and we all get excited. So that's what I kind of think. Like uh, the only time I've drafted him, I've kind of went with that in mind, meaning that I'm going to be patient if he doesn't, uh, if if he doesn't have the immediate production, or or he starts slow or has a bad game, when everyone freaks out, I'm gonna try to buy. Because to me, Jonathan <laughs> Brooks is what we want. John is what we want James Cook to be. Okay. Like, like James Cook, I think he's all right, but James Cook isn't as like good as we want James Cook to be. I think he's he's really explosive. He has decent receiving chops. Probably one like uh, analytically one of the best receiving chops in the class. Questionable pass blocking but again it's more like jameer gibbs where like i don't want you pass blocking i want you catching passes type thing you know yeah. so yeah um, and that's that's something that i thought was actually really good in brooks's tape was that he is a good pass blocker and we, we talk about this all the time with running backs if you can pass block you're gonna be on the field on third downs right some people will look at that as a hindrance others hey you know what if he's on the field there's more opportunity there yeah i i I just wanted to throw in, first of all, love the comparison to Brees Hall because we saw it a little bit with him coming out, but then we saw it again last year with the Dalvin Cook signing. So I love that. Take advantage of the panic buy. We know Brees Hall is good by him, but that might not be right now with Jonathan Brooks because he might go really high to somebody. But when those people start to panic in the middle of the season, that's when you need to take advantage of that. I love that advice just so, so much because that's the kind of strategy stuff that people don't think about. Think about what you were willing to pay for a guy in April when you're buying him in October, because if you can yeah. get it for cheaper, that's value. And that's what we're really, really focused on. One News tidbit, tidbit I came up with while I was researching Jonathan Brooks. Dallas Cowboys team doctor assisted in his ACL surgery. So if anybody knows if Jonathan Brooks is healthy, it could be the Dallas Cowboys with, with their team doctor there. So uh, so you know gonna, if the Cowboys pass on Jonathan Brooks. He's trash and nobody wants him. <laughs> 
Because the Cowboys never make a bad decision. Ever. <laughs> ever. What are you talking about? It doesn't happen. Oh, man. <laughs> It, oh, so, that's amazing. Yeah, further looking at this class, um, some people have Marshawn Lloyd as the top running back in this class. What do you like about his game? Um, when you when you think about how the NFL is shifting to where there's no such thing as a bell cow anymore, where there's roughly 25 to 30 touches being split amongst two people, you want the guy who can do the most with the least. Marshawn Lloyd, uh, you want to talk about you know proving – on tape and in their analytics, that's Marshawn Lloyd that, okay, you're only going to give me this one touch, this drive. Hell, I'm going to score. Like, like I got to get it done. That that, that, he's that type of player. Um, The words that we keep using, you know, like me and Alfredo is like, he teleports like that jump cut is vicious. Like his biggest problem is he follows his blockers to a fault. Like if you watch him in a gap scheme and you see him on that pulling guard, he might as well just be hugging that pulling guard the whole time. It's like, come on guy, get up in that crease. But again, these are very culturable things that I think he can fix. So again, Marshall Lloyd for me, the only thing stopping me for making him RB one is is again landing love for Trey Benson? <laughs> yeah, well, a little bit, a little bit. Let's put it this way: I love Marshawn Lloyd, but Rational Jagger likes Trey Benson. Okay, like if that makes sense. Like, it's like Marshawn Lloyd is my favorite running back. I hope I uh, would be an ideal landing spot. Um, and the Cowboys, you keep that's one well, thing they do. <laughs> obviously, whoever lands, that, that's the default for every like potential three down back yeah. because the Cowboys have Rico Dowdle right now. Like, yeah. You know. who couldn't who wasn't very good last year so no. i mean like again like the chiefs um if they if they're they, they're still really into pacheco so whatever but and they, yeah. the chiefs have already re-signed their savior clyde edwards Alaire re-signed today that's the only thing that matters right josh ceh back where he belongs i'm the only still believer in ceh <laughs> slight <laughs> pivot what does that say about what does that say about a um jk dobbins they bring in jk dobbins everyone's like oh this is what you should have done to begin with and then they're like, they're like all right five, <laughs> five and they're like they're, come on teams are realizing running backs with torn achilles not it not that's it. what it is we'd rather have our five foot six hundred and sixty five pound do nothing running back i still believe <laughs> i still believe <laughs> You shouldn't, oh. Ryan, but that's okay. <laughs> I know. No, but you you hit a nail on the head with Lloyd that I wanted to bring up was his yards per carry were just salivating last season. And I think a big part of that, like you said, was he knew they were going to throw the ball most of the time because they had Caleb Williams. He had to score when he touched that damn ball. He needed yep. to get all his yards when he could because he wasn't going to get a ton of carries. He has very little tread on those tires which is not a lot, not something you can say about a lot of the running backs coming up. Yeah. His Utah state all 22 film is six minutes. Six, <laughs> like I, I had to, I had to look and I was just like, is this a highlight rule? I was like, I want the, I want the all 22. I, like, I need the film. <laughs> I'm like, Oh, this is real. <laughs> yeah. You, you have to love running backs who, who, who don't have a lot of tread on the tires, Josh. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. And and that's kind of what the NFL is going to nowadays, because, you know, I, I know we talked a little earlier about the workhorse profiles, right? Teams don't really look for workhorse guys. You mentioned earlier that you didn't really think that Jalen Wright could be that. He's one of my favorite running backs in this class. And when we get to landing spots a little bit later, you'll see why I like feel like this is a perfect fit for him. But tell me like, with, with him being a potential as a complimentary back, what would he bring to a team's backfield that could make him into a fantasy football star in the future? Well, all right, let me add some nuance to that. Cause um, I just, I think he needs a one cut system. He needs a Mike McDaniel system. He needs a 49er system um, to get the best out of him. The, the, that's where I'm at with him. It's not so much that I don't think he's very good. It's just that like, I don't think he runs as strong as he could to be like, all right, we're going to give this guy 20 yards. But again, if he finds that crease, it's, it's game on because he's, I mean, that dude can fly. He's, yeah, Four, three, eight. Yeah. yeah. So I joke with everyone. Jalen Wright can be anywhere from my RB eight 
to my RB2, depending on where he goes. And I'm not trying to give a cop out to, to anybody listening or watching that. I mean, that's just the reality that we're living in that like, that's this that, running back class though. Yeah. Yeah. Because there isn't a top flight, like do it all like golden boy prospect. They're all kind of gapped into that same tier. And then landing spots are really going to kind of help flush everything out. I think. Yeah. Let's say if the Patriots or bills get Jalen, right. I don't want that. I, I don't want that. For hmm. I, I, I don't think like the Patriots have a good running game, but not because, because they have LeGarrette Blunts and Ramondre Stevenson's there's battering Rams that they'll run into like a stacked box for three games uh, for, for three plays in a row. That's different. Like Jalen Wright can't do that. But again, if you give him like, I'm, I was surprised the Dolphins re-signed Raheem Mostert. I, I mean, I guess not. He had a good year, but like, just go get Jalen Wright. Go get a younger uh, 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 Raheem Mostert because that's my comp for him. And that that and that's why I use Raheem Mostert because like Raheem Mostert is an RB one if he is in a Shanahan, Mike McDaniel, some type of system like that. But if you if you were to, to send him um, again to, I, I even think like the Texans would be a good spot. Um, I was just going to bring, I wanted to go see who Josh had for his landing spot, because when you started throwing out these 49ers comps, I was like, Oh God, compliment. I mean, look, look at the Vikings, right? The Vikings <laughs> yeah. need a running back. Yeah. Look at um, uh, the Rams. Everybody feels like that Kieran Williams is going to get replaced because all the Rams do is just add to the, the RB room. And there's really nobody behind Kieran Williams. My, my pick, honestly, and I'll just spoil it now. I, dude, this guy feels like Taylor made for an Andy Reid system, in my opinion. I think that like pairing him with Isaiah Pacheco, I think would be phenomenal. I feel like with the speed that he brings, if he can develop a little bit more as a receiver, there there's a lot of Miles Sanders in his game. And I think that that would fit so well in that system. I mean, Miles did really well with Peterson and they used him on a lot of different ways. Peterson is an extension of Andy Reid and how he calls the plays. There's a lot of West Coast love there, and I think that Jalen Wright could really fit into that. But like, like you guys are saying with with these, you know, the Shanahan type schemes, like he, I think he could fit perfect behind Aaron Jones for one year in Minnesota and be the guy in 2025. I think that could be yep. a great fit too. That is a good fit because, like I said, I don't, I get why they like Pacheco. Pacheco is a coach's player. You know, he's like he's mm-hmm. tough. He does all the stuff. But blah 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 blah. Like, I get it. <laughs> but like at the end of the day, like I just want someone who's really good and like athletic. So you know, yeah. so like Jalen Wright to the Chiefs. That's a sleeper pick. That would that would bump him up for me. Because like you know why I don't think of the Chiefs as a running game because they've had such they have Clyde Edwards there. Yeah, they got such shitty running backs. I forget that they run the ball. I forget that that's even an option. And like yeah. Isaiah Pacheco is a redraft maybe guy for me, but yeah. I I don't I don't believe in Pacheco. And I, I, was I thought somebody that had Pacheco as RB nine in their dynasty rankings, and I vomited. What's yeah. funny is I don't have him in a single dynasty league. And now that you say that, <laughs> Jagger, mm-hmm. like I I have zero shares of Pacheco. So without even realizing it, I I agree with you there. He's not a dynasty asset for me. I call them dynasty blinders. Some players I physically can't see. Like, I, <laughs> like I, you know what? Zay Pacheco was there. I was like, I didn't notice because I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I call that time to draft a wide receiver. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Who? There's there is no need for Isaiah Pacheco. Guys, we are going to be going over a lot of the top running backs in this class. We're going to keep going here with Jagger. He already gave his rankings. We'd love if you could pop over to YouTube, hit that subscribe button. But if you have any questions about the running backs in this class, this is a live show. This is one of your chances to ask Jagger May a question about these guys. So throw it in the comments. We'll be more than happy to uh, get you some answers. Uh, maybe the opposite of Jalen Wright. I don't know if that's fair to say is Audric Estime. Um, and then he saw his stock dip terribly after the combine where he ran a really bad 40, but came back to life a little bit at his pro day coming up into the four fives. Uh, We just recently did a show with Garrett Price on Mocking with the Stars with Gator J, and he mentioned he sees Estime in a LeGarrette Blunt Blunt type role, and you've already mentioned Blunt a few times. Is Estime a guy who would fit in New England, or is that at least the role you see him playing in the NFL, Jagger? When I looked at Audric Estime, he's even got some receiving chops. I said Ramondre Stevenson. I'm like, this guy's kind of slow as hell, but damn, when he gets rolling, it's game over, you know? Yeah. And, and like I said, he's got a soft hand. Yeah, he could pass block. Like, 
Audrey guess to me, I, I mean it. Like he could be Ramondre or he could be like Roshan, if that makes sense. <laughs> You know, yeah. like, you know, like kind of a guy. So like, uh, and you're going to bring up someone I left off, but like I had, <laughs> like I had, I was like, man, like Audrey Gessamay, I just see a role for him. Like, let's put it this way. Audrey Gessamay is going to make a roster because again, you want to talk like coaches speak, like he pass blocks, he runs tough. Yeah. You know, like he always washes his briefs or whatever. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> Like a coach is going to want estimate. So I doubt he's going to go undrafted or anything like that. Um, uh, he's not going to be like Dwayne McBride, a guy who I liked and, and just was a waste of a pick. Uh, <laughs> but like, I, I don't quite see that. So I think he's going to get drafted. And again, it's just utilization, you know, and then finding a spot that's going to let him rumble, you know. All right. Let's I, stick I, with the big back theme. Oh, Ryan, yeah. you got a continuation? Oh, no, I was just going to say the exact same thing is it, it's when, when you deal with these big backs, it does matter where they land because you have to have a coach that's going to let them do what they can do yeah. best. So. Yeah. Okay. So let's stick with the big backs. You kind of foreshadowed this with somebody that you left off of your rankings. A glaring omission from your top 10 was Braylon Allen out of Wisconsin. So I'm just going to put it this way. WTF, bro. <laughs> um. <laughs> Man, does that big guy run like a little guy? I, just, Ooh, <laughs> <me>. <laughs> like, I, I just like, I, I don't know, man. Like when you look at his tape, it's just the he doesn't break thing, tackles. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it, man. It's like it's hard for me to look at. It's really hard for me to look at. It's kind of like you know, you see this this mean old school Dodge Charger. And then you turn it on and then it sounds like a Prius like that. That's kind of where uh, like Braylon Allen is for me. And the youth is the one thing that makes me like, man, can it, should I put him ahead of Cody Schrader? Cody yeah. Schrader bombed the combine, but he's young. And I was like, does he suck? Cause he's young. You know, he just doesn't like, no, can he put it all together? So that's, I don't know what to do with Braylon Allen. So that's my mission. Like, like, I don't know what to do with him. I don't, if the NFL really, really likes him, and I know that's a cop out, then I will like him. But there yeah. is nothing in his tape. And I'm not an analytics guy, but I even went there. I, I was like, all right, show me the ancient texts. What what do they say of Braylon Allen? And then, you know, and some of them really like him because of early breakout age. But when yeah, you look at other stuff, yeah, you look at other stuff, you know, especially if you take away the one year, and I, I don't like, you know, taking away their best performance but if you look at like what have you done for me lately it's not very good and then considering where you know wisconsin was a running has been a running back factory for us he's kind of been the shittiest golden boy to ever come out of wisconsin if you really think about it and i was excited about monty ball so think about that you know yeah. but like money money ball like did stuff in college but well, i think like, the league too was excited about monty ball like monty ball yeah. was a second round pick like yeah so I get that, you know. That was also so a different I, I just, time. I think it's really interesting <laughs> because, I mean, there, there's plenty of people that are just like, oh, well, with Braylon Allen, there's a lot more projection involved because he will be 20 this year, right? Like, he's, he's playing most of this season at 19 yeah. years old. Yeah. So it's kind of similar with, like, J.J. McCarthy, right? Like, everybody is looking at McCarthy and projecting what he can become because he was held back so much in college because he wasn't asked to do a lot with Braylon Allen. It's a little similar in the sense that he's young and inexperienced at the position, but there's still a level of production that he he's put up like two straight thousand yard seasons. He had over 30 uh, touchdowns in college over three years. Like there's some production there, but I mean, Brian, we were talking before the show, the dude runs so straight up. Like, you can flatten him. And that was my biggest issue with Darren McFadden when he came up because he was a really tall back. And it's like, if you're not getting your pads low, you're going to get blown up. Yep. Darren McFadden had some good seasons, but for the most part was a pretty big disappointment considering his draft capital. Could we see something similar with Braylon Allen where maybe people are over-projecting him and he just shits the bed? Yep. Because I'm I'm an Arkansas guy, so the, the Darren McFadden thing that's that it still feels fresh all these years later. Yeah, sorry. Cut some deep. <laughs> yeah, because it's like not only just that, like Darren McFadden ran too high for being a you know sledgehammer, yep. but he had the tiniest legs for being a big. Like he was like, <laughs> you know, it's like if you put 
a, like a cinder block on top of like two toothpicks. That's kind of where he was at. Uh, at <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. But um, I mean, that that's where it is for Brandon Allen. I, I know some people really love him. I just, especially where the NFL is now with running backs, how patient are they? Because like I've come to, I, I think the NFL are less patient. The yes, only a hundred percent. The only positions that they're patient with are the premium, like super premium positions, like your pass rushers, mm-hmm. offensive line, and quarterbacks. If you're wide receiver, I would argue they're not that patient with quarterback. Yeah, quarterbacks, I think it's all relative because I feel like they are ready to move on pretty quickly, like we just saw with unless Jordan. they like have top five draft capital, they're not getting more than two years. And look at Trey Lance. Opinion. Look at like Trey, Trey Lance got four passes. They're like, all right, we're good. You know, you are now a cowboy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> be, be gone <laughs> get ready to speak wait until next year <laughs> yeah exactly no i i'm glad you said it you literally illustrated the problems i've had as a dynasty ranker looking at braylon allen is you want to rank him highly because of his age youngest back in the class because of his size you want him to be derrick henry and then you go watch the film he is not Derrick Henry, plain and simple. He is a big boy who runs like a little boy. I couldn't have said it better. So I thought that was yeah. just perfect there, Jagger. <laughs> All right. One other person you left off the top 10. I know a lot of people were really high on this guy before the combine. And that was Bucky Irving out of Oregon. Really disappointing combine. And I feel like that's really what has drug people down off Bucky Irving. Uh you left him off straight up. So you tell me, what aren't you seeing from Bucky Irving? He is a smaller DeAndre Swift, and that's not a good thing. Uh, <laughs> I, and could he be useful? Yes. But it's he's kind of the, the reciprocal. I always say that he's a reciprocal of Audric Estime and uh, Brian, uh, Braylon Allen. Like, he's a small guy that isn't very good at being small. Like he's good in, in short areas, whatever, but he's not incredibly fast all the time. And he, and it's not even just that, you know, I don't, I don't even care about that. I think he's fast enough. He wastes so much time. He wastes so much time in the backfield. Like, like I always joke about him, you know, there's too much pitter patter, not enough. Let's get at her with him. And, and that's what worries me. And then I feel like, He's in that Kyron Williams area where it's like, could he have a Kyron Williams season? Maybe, but like we shouldn't make bets that small running backs that don't run fast are going to, you know, magically be good because I I'm under the, under the impression that outside of the Rams, I don't think Kyron Williams would be as good as he is. Um, So again, this is like, what do I do with this player? Because, um, if he goes into a system that will really utilize, let, let's put it this way: if this was, if Bucky Irving went to the old school, Josh McDaniels was still at home, and people thought he could be a head coach, but we don't know who he actually is because he still no C days. Or we had James White; I think he could be good if that makes sense. Yeah. Like a team that will utilize that pass catcher role, where really, if you're out there, the only thing you're going to be doing is maybe doing a draw play, but mainly catching passes, but. And especially in this modern NFL, I don't know how they're going to really trot him out there. And then, I mean, that, 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 that's where I'm at. And I, again, I liked Bucky Irving. He used to be my RB5 in this class. But does a combine matter? No, but yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> One of the things I'm trying to teach myself, and, and honestly, we've made a lot of jokes about Clyde Edwards-Alaire, but it comes back to the, the misread on Clyde Edwards-Alaire. And to be fair, when he came in, I thought people were overdrafting him. And then when I I was trying to do the post hype sleeper thing, when people started hating him, I wanted to like him. But going back to the issue is he's a decent pass catcher, but he can't pass block. And I think that's my issue with Bucky Irving is it's easy to see a guy of his size who's an excellent pass catcher and be like, he is going to be a hell of a third down back. But if he can't block and doesn't quite have the breakaway speed that you want there, I don't know if it's going to be as good a third down back as you want. It's certainly not James White. (laughs) Yeah, and it's just like these guys like Cody Schrader, Kamani Vidal, like why I got them ranked high is their their tape, they look like an NFL running back. Like Cody Schrader, I don't know what happened at, at the combine. Apparently he was hurt or whatever. Um, and then he left hurt, but he put up major yards in the SEC. 
and like they used him downfield. He kind of was the offense. There was so much evidence in his production and on tape that he can do it. So that's what like some of these other guys I I have ranked ahead. You know, like the unsexy ones, like Ray Davis. Yeah. Like Ray Davis is old as shit. He's like twenty four years old. But like I think that like. <laughs> Right out there, and he could be somebody, you know. <laughs> I, I just love your ability to foreshadow Jagger because, like, it just sets up our next question so fucking well. Well, I also love. I, I bring this up every week on our mock draft show. I love that we sit around and call twenty-five-year-old kids old as shit <laughs> in this game that we play. But speaking of age concerns, what we want to love about Braylon Allen. Do we have any age concerns? Not so much around Marshawn Lloyd, but Lloyd is not exactly young, 23 years old, but two of the better backs in this class, specifically Blake Corum, who is 23 and I believe will turn 24 during the season, and Ray Davis, who will turn 25 during the season. Do you have just flat-out age concerns? Because they both have over 700 touches in college, and does that hurt their dynasty standings at all? Because like Ray Davis... This man could get one contract and, and age out of the NFL running back alumni, Jagger. Let's put it this way. I don't care about running backs to begin with as a dynasty guy. <laughs> but like, there you go. Ray Davis only had a year or two on my roster to begin with. <laughs> if you really think yeah. about it. But, like, again, it's kind of um, how much does that bother the NFL? Because, like, the tape looks really good. He has really, really good. And, and I know some people care about this. Some people don't. Some people get butt hurt if you talk about it. But I like the, the NFL really cares about character. Oh, and, and think, he has like, so much. <laughs> yes, so much. His character. story is amazing. So, if you don't know Ray Davis's story, go look up Ray Davis. Yeah. And like, is that analysis? No, but it matters to these guys. I mean, look at Jalen Carter. He had like one questionable car wreck and he plummeted like, people were talking about him being like a second overall pick so like like these when you're spending millions of dollars on these players stuff like character kind of matters so that's why i'm willing to bully him buoy him up blake quorum i know this is stupid it is so hard for me not to think he's going to be a charger it, it, yeah it, we're all right there with you yeah <laughs> like jim harbaugh has no cooth. He is he is not slick. He's just like at all. He's like, man, I love, I really love JJ McCarthy. Like, like JJ McCarthy could have been a sleeper until Jim Harbaugh. And I bet the rest of the NFL was like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like, I'm <laughs> to get my quarterback. <laughs> I was like, shut up. Like, you're, like you're, you're, he's a guy in the sleeper group chat that's like, so and so still on the board. And he's the top. Yep. Of the he's like, you know. And I'm in two picks, you motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like, and like Blake Quorum, he fits a need for the Chargers. Like, yeah, are, are, are we? Yeah. If you really, are we going to do Josh Kelly again? Or, or, you know, <laughs> is, is this the year? Is this the year that we're finally going to? Uh, what's his name for A and M that I liked and looked like an asshole? Uh, I forgot Spiller. his name. That's Ryan's yeah, dude. Isaiah Spiller. Spiller. Yeah, Isaiah Spiller. You're, I love him too. You're probably the reason I loved him because I listen to people smarter than me. So I'm putting all the blame on you now that I know you loved him. <laughs> yeah. That was before I really was good at what I do. <laughs> it's, it's, it's while I was the exact same level. Jagger as with what the swagger. I, I like it. <laughs> For me, it's the exact same level as I am now. So pay attention yeah. to nothing. I said, no, what I liked about Spiller was at one point, like all three of the top running backs in that class were looked at as like the one a B and C. And then all of a sudden everybody hated Spiller. Turns out they were fucking right. <laughs> Super right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause like, to be honest, like if I ever get a dream office, I want a picture of Terrace Marshall and a picture of I say Isaiah Spiller. So I can look at it and remember, you just, just remember like, you know, don't do it, bro. They'll don't probably do both be on cameo <laughs> soon enough. We could probably get them in a room together. <laughs> Oh man, I'm gonna use that for a bit at some point. <laughs> Before we move on to actual fantasy analysis, with Jay being the guy who just like keeps everything moving here, I have to get his question up on the screen. He's gonna make you choose between me, Josh, and him right here on the screen. I will remind you that one of us works with you at another company. <laughs> And because of that, I picked Josh. Okay. Ah. <laughs> I can't I can't show favoritism. I can't show favoritism. So. <laughs> there we go. And, and and Bonnie, you have it just so perfectly. Spiller who? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. what, what a mistake. 
what a what a mistake. Um, so so last year you were big on Devonta Shane. We want to have you do it again this year. Who are your favorite mid to late round sleepers coming into the draft? The guys that that aren't going to get all the hype. And, and obviously, you've brought his name up a whole bunch. I think Cody Schrader probably falls into this. You haven't had a chance to talk about him. I, I made the joke with Josh, and hopefully I'm not speaking for you here naming him. I made the joke with Josh was, I was just going to ask you, who is Cody Schrader? Because I have not done a lot of research. I've done enough, and he hasn't come up a lot. <laughs> so. Oh, man. Um He's Missouri's running back. Um, so, uh, you know, you know, Missouri has a, like a spread them and shred them offense since the beginning okay. of time, whatever. But um, I, one specific play, they flexed him out rot wide and he straight up burnt a corner, like, like straight burnt a corner. And again, he has that, um, that one cut and burn them, like all the stuff that I think are, um, our fantasy point getter, like he catches passes. I think he's fast. Um, I, I could see how he's using the NFL. That's why I don't think I'm surprised more people weren't talking about Cody Schrader. And I was like, I was like the combine. I'm like, here, here, here it is. You he's know, finally like, going to get his moment. <laughs> yeah. And then he like ran, I don't know, into the dirt. <laughs> like, I don't <laughs> even know the number because it was really low. And I'm like, oh man, Isaiah Spiller, two electric boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> So, but uh, he's my guy. I think now, that, like, <laughs> I hope I didn't put words into your mouth with Schrader. If there's another mid round, late round back you like better, please mention their name. But I just know we didn't get a chance to talk about him, and he's like your RB7. So, uh, Kimani Vidal is another okay. one that I really like because, like, he's like Ray Davis, except that, like, he still gets carded for cigarettes and stuff like that. But like, you know, just, just like much younger. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> Ray Davis has to help Kamani Vidal get into R-rated movies. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking dying here, bro. <laughs> like he's got the, uh, he's got that really uh, uh, thick build that I think that. Um, he reminds me of a, I'm not saying as a running stop, but his build reminds me of Nick Chubb and the okay. way that he runs reminds me of Nick Chubb. So like what I mean, Future Nick Cleveland Chubb, it, ooh, that would hurt my drum Ford share. So selfishly don't like that, <laughs> but uh, I, I would, <laughs> I would, uh, I wouldn't hate that at all. And I think we, we sleep on the Browns as a spot to get a running back, but um, uh, I, he doesn't have a whole lot in his uh, receiving profile, but um Another guy that I, I, has kind of been brought up is it Isaac Guarando or I don't I don't even know how to say his name. I think it's Guarendo. Guarendo. Oh, okay. the G like a W H Guarendo. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's super athletic and fast. I can yeah. tell you that. So um, uh, if the NFL can utilize that, it's just I don't see it on his tape. And if I can't see it, and I don't have like analytics other than a RAS score, it's hard yeah. for me to, 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 to say anything. Yeah. He, he's definitely one who just took that large leap after the combine. And I think he's on a lot of people's radar now, and then it'll be interesting to see if landing spot lines up with, with what we saw at the combine. It's, yeah. it, you've kind of put it best. If the NFL believes in him, then we need to start believe believing yeah. in him. Yeah. All right, let's get into landing spots. Let's finish this show up with uh, where we think these players are going to end up. Um, Jagger, I always give our guests the option on this. You can talk about where you'd love to see them land or where you think they're going to land. You can predict the draft or you can just say where you'd like to have them end up. There are some teams that have a need, so I'm going to go ahead and list some of these teams that Josh has for us here. Uh, Cowboys, we talked about. Man, they need a starter. They are the the ideal spot for everybody. Raiders is Zamir White, their guy. Vikings, they just got Aaron Jones on a one-year deal. Uh, Bucks need a compliment to Rashad White. The Browns, Nick Chubb is coming off that knee injury, and at points they were talking about him being a cut candidate. Obviously, that doesn't appear to be the case anymore. Texans did get Joe Mixon on a three-year deal. However, you know, Damian Pierce ain't it. No, no depth there. Chiefs, Josh wrote no depth behind Isaiah Pacheco. He obviously wrote this before Clyde Edwards Alaire resigned. Uh, I, I stand my ground. It, it's still no depth <laughs> behind Isaiah Pacheco. <laughs> Broncos, Javonta Williams is in the last year of his rookie deal. Eagles need depth behind Saquon Barkley. Giants need players. Um, they have Devin Singletary. Panthers, Chuba Hubbard's on the last year of his rookie deal. Sanders has been a disappointment. Uh, the Rams, no depth behind Kyron Williams. And then the Cardinals, 
as much as we'd love him to, James Conner is not going to be able to play forever. And Michael Carter just doesn't seem like he's going to be the guy. So we're going to start with Jonathan Brooks here, Jagger. So um, Josh, I'll actually let you go first here since you and I agree. Where do you have Jonathan Brooks landing? And do you have this as where you think he's going to be or just the ideal fantasy spot, Josh? Um, I, For me, it's ideal for fantasy. Um, and it's the Cowboys. I mean, it, staying in Texas, I think that yeah, he kind of fits that it doesn't really seem like they're going for these like bigger backs, you know, and Brooks isn't a big back by any means. He played most of last year around 205. I believe he added about 10 pounds uh, heading into the combine, but because he's injured and couldn't participate in the drills, we don't really know how he played or could potentially play at 215. So, but I think even if he stays at, at the 215 range, he has the the tools and the ability to be a, a three down guy if that's what they want him to be. He can pass block. He can run between the tackles. There's a little bit of patience there, and he's got decent speed. He played really well at Texas, so I think really that's a ideal landing spot, not just for fantasy, but also in real life football as well. No, I think it makes a lot of sense, and and you guys know if you've ever watched our show, I look for connections, coach connections, and at this point, doctor connections. Jonathan Brooks to the Cowboys book it because his doctor works for Dallas Jagger you want a different route with this yeah it's the Texans for me because uh I, I love their one cut system I think he's got good vision and he can catch passes Joe Mixon can catch passes but I think he's in his uh dink and dunk you know we'll you know, flare out in the flats and if everything gets bad I'll I'll give it to you you know stage of his career and um you know Josh made a good point there's no depth like like Damien, who's Damien Pierce? Damien. Every every damn dynasty analyst worth his chops told you to trade him. Like yep. every everyone, everyone was just like, I don't know, man. I don't think it's real. Um, so that and, hey, and let, it, I, I like to throw horror stories out. I like to let people know that we screw up as much as we do right. I got offered a first round pick for Damien Tier, Pierce last year on an RB needy team. I needed RBs. I held on to Pierce. That first round pick ended up being the 101. I'd be looking at fucking Marvin Harrison right now instead of Damian Pierce rotting on my bench. So when when everybody's telling you to sell somebody, fucking sell them. Plain and simple. Yeah. <laughs> so. Unless you have the big five running backs, you should probably just sell them. That's what I tell yeah, everyone. Like, I'm, like, I'm an idiot. Yeah. I, I tell everyone, like, should I sell this running back? I don't even look at your roster. Probably. Yes. <laughs> You're asking, yeah. You know what? That's probably going to be my my philosophy from this point forward. Because <laughs> why not? <laughs> What's the worst? I could get the next Damian Pierce. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's go ahead and, um, and make that and, work. And then another reason why I picked the Texans is they don't need Jonathan Brooks to be good right away because they do have Joe Mixon. So that's just like okay, we have this one year loner, or I, I don't know how that. Uh, Fun fact, guys, I don't – I learned a lot about football. I've chosen not to care about salary cap, numbers. Yes. It's uh, all any, Yeah, I just like – how long is Joe makes his contract? Couldn't tell you. I don't have time. Someone go three look at – 27. Spot. Yeah, three, <laughs> okay, three for 27. And there's probably a 1,000 outs in that contract. So let's just say that yeah. Joe Mixon's on a one-year loan. <laughs> and they can have Jonathan Brooks, you know, come in later – or if Joe Mixon says, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to be even worse now. <laughs> <laughs> you, want, you want to see what three point yards per carry looks like? What? <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, Joe Mixon gives you the ugliest 12 points a game I've ever seen. And like yeah. one 150 point uh, hat trick a year. I mean, that you just pencil that in. But again, it's ugly. So that's why I think it's a good spot. No, I think that's perfect. And then you actually have the next guy, Trey Benson, your RB1, going to the Cowboys. Yeah. Uh, that's, again, Jerry Jones. He seems like a Jerry Jones guy. Like, <laughs> he's big. He's fast. He didn't play in the SEC, though, Dagger. That's, that's true. the problem. That's true. Jerry Jones um, is an SEC guy. Yeah. That's Texas true. is now in the SEC. So there's my link. <laughs> yeah. Jace McClellan, you're going to be a Cowboy. <laughs> Welcome to Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> no. I had him going to the Vikings for all the reasons you like Trey Benson. He is a potential three down back. They have Aaron Jones on this one year deal. Aaron Jones is obviously getting up there in age. It's so funny that we talk about running backs this way. Um, but I think Benson is going to be the nice changing of the guard. So I think Minnesota, I think I was saying Arizona the whole time. I meant Minnesota. The Vikings is where I have this man going. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Josh, where do you have? I think the Raiders are a good spot. I think that, um, you know, going from somebody like Josh Jacobs, who can be, who was a, a three down guy for them, transitioning into somebody like Benson, who has that three down potential, you know, maybe he starts behind Zamir White. Okay, cool. They still need to make some moves along their offensive line. And I think at, at pick 13, they could, you know, potentially do that. Or maybe they end up trading up to get a quarterback. Who knows? Um, but I think in that second to third round, I think Benson could very easily be a target for them. And I think that would be a really good fit and what he could bring to the table to continue to boost that offense. Yeah, you know? I think we all kind of have the same thing on Benson is we like the fact that he can play all three down. So why wouldn't we like that? Um, Josh, along your terms with why Benson would fit with the Raiders is exactly why I think Marshawn Lloyd fits with the Raiders. I also like the fact that he'd be staying West Coast. So that's where I have Marshawn Lloyd landing. Jagger, you have him uh, taken over for James Conner eventually. Yeah. Um, he, one, he compliments Connor and can eventually take over for Connor. And I love you put Michael Carter as mid. Michael Carter was my Damian Pierce, guys. Like that, mm. that was my, Michael Carter was my Damian Pierce. And I'm like, this guy's a stud. I think he's great. Blah, blah, blah. I don't care that he's only 5'9 and under 200 pounds <laughs> to make that fast. Like, I just, <laughs> like that. I, I love him. Can't pass block. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but he's a, he's a he's a half a down back, at, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like, like, we all learn, we make mistakes, yeah. whatever. Like if fantasy fantasy receipts will pull mine. I was like the biggest Michael Carter guy. Paul Patterson, if you're watching this, you were right. Um, but anyway, <laughs> uh, the Cardinals. One, the way that I think that offense can build around. Uh, Kyler, I think it's great to have a pass catching back. James Conner like can catch passes. So imagine, you know, if you like James Conner, imagine if James Conner was younger and fast, you know, and didn't get injured every year. That's you know, kind of why I like Marshawn Lloyd. So <laughs> I, I think that's perfect. And then Josh, you're the first one to bring up the Rams here. Now you had brought it up numerous times that they need depth behind Kyron Williams. Yeah, I mean, when Kyron Williams went down last year. They were with what? They were literally signing Darrell Henderson off the street, bringing Royce Freeman off the street. Um, they have Ronnie Rivers as their number two back right now. Yes, the, the silence is deafening. Okay. Yeah. There's your issue right there. So, you know, keep a local guy at home, right? He went to USC, keep him in LA. And everything that we've said and really Jagger has said about Marshawn Lloyd, he can do a little bit of everything. The Rams yeah. went through and gave Kyron Williams 90 plus percent of the touches last year. It felt like when he was on the yep. field that Marshawn Lloyd can do that hands down. No problem. So mm -hmm. if something were to happen with Kyron Williams, you're not really skipping a beat by moving to someone like Marshawn Lloyd, in my opinion. So yeah. I'm, I'm all about it. There you go. Jagger, we didn't give you a lot of time to talk about Blake Corum other than, you know, the age thing. Um, all in unison, we can say he's going to be a charger. It's funny. Yeah. I've noticed this now two for two. Last week, everybody thinks Bo Nix is going to the Broncos. This week, everyone thinks Blake Corum is going to the Chargers. So, Jagger, I'll let you just have a little bit of time here. Let's talk about uh, Blake Corum and the Chargers, why it's a good fit. Um, One, the coach really likes him. And Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jim Harbaugh is like me, I think, but like <laughs> Like, oh, how I am a dynasty guy. So like, I just really like my guy. I don't care what anyone says, and I'll tell everyone about it. And um, two, um, they'll run the ball a lot, yeah. and they need a thumper. Um, and I think Blake Corn gets a lot of shit because he was behind a really good offensive line. But they ran a lot of NFL concepts, and he was, like, good. Like, sometimes people hate looking at good enough or, like, okay. Like, you know, everyone either wants really bad or amazing. And I think he's just pretty good. And I think the Chargers could use pretty good right now when they have holes literally everywhere else but quarterback. So, you know. Perfect. Let's talk about the uh, the, the big guy who runs like the little guy, Braylon Allen. Um, Josh, I'll actually let you get us started here because you were the first person to bring up the Browns as a landing spot. Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> with, with Nick Chubb, being as great as he's been and being able to really handle every down, even if they didn't use him on every down, um, it kind of seems like the moment that he went down, they really went to that sort of like split back feature, right? Like finding guys that, you know, 
one could really handle the the receiving type work and then utilizing like Kareem Hunt is sort of like the early down guy, even if, you know, Jerome Ford got plenty of carries last year, but yep. really wasn't the most effective with those carries, but still saw quite a bit of receiving work, right? You get a guy like Braylon Allen, who's played in cold weather, is in theory, a obviously a bigger back, so he should play like a bigger back. But And I think this is where that projection sort of comes into play, right? If he can really develop and learn from a team that has had really good running back play for a few years and really learn how to utilize his size, he can be a big time bruiser in a cold weather game that can wear down teams. And then they can beat you on the outside with a guy like Jerome Ford. So I think he would be a really good complement to Ford. And that, again, you're kind of setting up for life after Chubb in this instance. Mm -hmm. And then Jagger, you have the Panthers, which I think would be an interesting dichotomy there because you'd have your quarterback too small and your running back too big. So I think that's a, an interesting. That's fit why for, I picked it to be honest. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Just no, to see them the standing next to each other. <laughs> I picked the Panthers because I, I I really like Dave Canales, and I think like uh, one of the things the Panthers did well is get a quarter uh, get a coach who can fix quarterbacks. And I don't think Bri I don't think Bryce is broken. I don't. But either. they were trying really hard. They were trying really hard to give him that Justin Fields treatment or the, the Mac Jones him. Yeah. But um uh, uh and with that being said, Rashad White, when you think of someone who isn't very good, but <laughs> if you like <laughs> Finally, somebody agrees with me. I have been touting Rashad White not being Rashad very good White for a hater. long time. Yeah. And thank you. If you think someone who's not very good, but if you pepper him with 10 targets a game, you can trick people to think he's good. Braylon Allen fits. I don't know. It just, yeah. it is like, I just, it looks, makes sense to me. It's like, man, you're kind of a shit runner, but like, Hey, what if we used you as like a pseudo tight end out of the backfield where we hey, just there you go. You? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to make the joke that maybe he could play offensive line, but I've seen him block. He can't play offensive line. That's not going to work out real well. So, um, for me, He's young, I Ryan. To, he can learn. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I have him going to the Buccaneers and really this is just me believing the Buccaneers are going to get a big back to, to come in and replace what Leonard, Leonard Fournette did for them a few years ago. It may not be Braylon Allen, but these were the options I had here of who I was picking from. And I think the Buccaneers are an interesting landing spot. They are a team that has been wildly inefficient blocking for the run. And so I don't know that Braylon Allen's going to be a good fit there where some people might get really excited if he ends up there, but as bad as their offensive line has been, this could be fantasy nightmare for Braylon Allen and, and, and Jagger. We're going to end this with Jalen Wright, and, and you have him ending up in Los Angeles with the Rams as that complimentary piece to Kyron Williams. Yeah, uh, and to be honest, uh, Josh sold it to me because I'm like, man, uh, Jalen Wright is good at all the things that Kyron Williams is not. So, like, imagine, you know, it's like I get Kyron Williams. He, man, he really, he really did a lot for people. So did Damian Pierce. I'm not, I, I don't mean to keep bringing him up. Man, I'm just you're saying... going to convince me on one of my teams that I have Kyron Williams that I got to trade him by the end of this. Show. Yeah, I feel like I need to be <laughs> shopping him because I have him a few places. So. Man, I don't, I don't want to hold that responsibility to tell you to do that. But um, it, I, I, I could have clicked the button on Kyron Williams like six times. I'm like, nope, not this team. Uh, but uh, That's fair. Um, I, I just think again, there is zero depth. Zach Evans is not a real player. He's not good. I know the Devi community loved him. I know you guys, like, he looked really good in college, but there is a reason why he got punted uh, from TCU to Ole, uh, Ole Miss and then uh, lost his starting role because he's not very good. So, to me, you want a one-cut system that needs – They, I think, I think the Rams need a running game, especially when you see, like, Matt Stafford uh, – declining as far as like age you know like maybe take a little bit of pressure off him that to me that's just the perfect fit and josh you already mentioned him to the chiefs stepping into that pass catching role being that miles sanders in the the andy Reid offense for me i think the browns still believe in nick chubb so i think you're going to see nick chubb get to be you know the thunder and jalen wright comes in as the perfect lightning back where he does not need to be a three down back he gets to be complimentary he gets to be what we wanted cream hunt to be there and, and it just never came to fruition so you're Maybe. saying r.i.p jerome ford huh 
Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't see the sorry, Browns. Jagger. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> those shares, <laughs> those shares aren't doing well. All right. We do, we do have a viewer question, and, and uh, guys, one last time before I let you guys out of here, please go over to YouTube, hit the subscribe button. I don't know, Josh, if you've looked at the numbers lately, we are 794. Eight, 794, so we picked up two during this show. There are a lot more than six people watching this show right now. I would like to think you're all subscribed, but if you're not, jump over to YouTube, hit that subscribe button. But our buddy Calvin Brown has six, one, two, three, four, five, six second round picks in the upcoming draft. One, three, six and 10 a oh, one three through six and 10. So he has a lot of picks. His team currently has Austin Eckler and Derrick Henry, which two running backs should he target in that second round? And from what I've seen in my mock drafts, Jagger, almost every running back is falling to the second round right now in 10 team drafts. Nobody is going in the first round as it should be. So which two, who should he target or should he just keep waiting till later and, and see what happens? <laughs> The, the big three that we keep naming, Lloyd, Benson, and Brooks. Okay. But here, I'm going to give you other actionable advice that you can do right now. Take one of those seconds, take Austin Eckler, go get a good running back right now. Like, like you don't – they consolidate some of those seconds into something that is real. Like, I don't – that's something that is you, – you know is production yeah. and you can get that on your team. So, like, take Austin Eckler in a second, um, go – I mean, who 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 could you buy that I that I'd be willing to tell you to go buy for a second? I would take Devin Singletary or not. That's some Devin, not sorry, that's a lot. I'd take uh, DeAndre Swift. I know. Folks okay, I was like, like what the hell? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I would never tell anyone to buy Devin Singletary. Uh, DeAndre Swift. I just read the name Singletary yeah. and laughed in my head, so I came out. <laughs> that's but, uh, yeah, go get um um go get someone like DeAndre Swift. Some of those guys that have fallen. Go get Saquon Barkley or something like yeah. that. You know, um, I was going to say you could probably package three of those seconds in Barkley to and and Eckler to go get Barkley. Basically, roll into your draft with three second rounders. That's yeah. fine. So you can walk out with th- or get rid of three of those and not be sad about it. So yeah, go get somebody good and get Eckler off your team. Just go. And, just- and the other thing I always talk about uh, to to Jagger's point here is look at your team. You're going to have to cut players for these draft picks. Find out how many players you're willing to cut and trade that many draft picks away because you need to make sure you have a balance at the end of this and you're not staring at your uh, your roster with anxiety trying to figure out who you're going to cut and trade after the draft. Do it now while these picks have the most value. After you make your picks, that player is going to lose value because they're on your roster now and they don't know if they want to pay for them. Let them make the decision for their own team. I think that's a great advice. I was going to also say too, kind of to um, Jagger's point, like using... Eckler in a second and I know we've kind of talked a little down on him but even going up getting Isaiah Pacheco I think is well worth the second round pick yeah yeah I think Pacheco Eckler is cooked man Uh, he uh, he he might be able to get Pacheco straight up for Eckler I don't even think he has to throw in a two there and then he can package three of those twos to go get another running back (laughs) people still believe like name value matters and this is where you take advantage of uh, market discrepancies. And then I'll give you a second option what to do with those seconds too. Like definitely go get your running backs. Like I'm, again, but you have six. Go try to buy late first or even earlier seconds. Yes. Consolidate them. It is much harder to trade up in draft than it is right now. Yeah, so when they see who's the available. <laughs> yeah. But you already know. You're like you you follow Club FFL. You're on you're looking at football guys, well, rookie ADP, whatever your tools you are using you kind of know where guys are falling already and you can kind of plan, you know, they give you some pivot points. Absolutely love it. And Jagger, before we let you out of here, it is time for your sleeper of not the 2024 draft, but the 2025 draft. What names should be be watching in college football this year that are going to take the world by surprise and be great for next year? Ashton Genty, um, man, he's in the Mountain West Conference. which means he's in a garbage conference, but uh, <laughs> I covered CSU. So I watched every CSU game out of all the CSU games that I covered as a radio producer, very few players. I was like, that's NFL talent. Ashton Genty is one of those guys. This dude, ha- he's got juice, man. And you know, like I know those, those, uh, those college fantasy guys really like him too, but I definitely think he translates. Then another one, Devin Neal, 
I know guys that I trust were disappointed that Devin Neal came back. And like, but that's like uh, Christian Williams, Jeff Bell. They're the ones who, who put me on to him. They're like, if Devin Neal comes out, he could be, you know, top three, top four guy, depending on where he goes. Uh, he's a very good player. So those are two guys. If you're a Debbie, if you can, it, you, I'll try to get them. Um, I know that I have like Devi supplemental drafts, Ashton Genty and Devin Neal are two guys that I'm going to go out of my way to try to acquire. And there you have it, guys. That is the running back 2024 episode of our Stars of Tomorrow series. Huge thanks to Jagger May from Football Guys. Please remind everybody your Twitter handle, where they can find your work, anything you're working on right now that they need to know about. You can catch me on the Twitter streets at Fantasy Blue Chip. Um, I'll, I post all my stuff there. I am a I am a company man. I am strictly at Football Guys, so all my stuff is there. Perfect. And uh, Jagger was included in our tra- our thread today that we did about Marshawn Lloyd. You and Alfredo had a nice little clip about Marshawn Lloyd on, on a podcast that we were able to get that in there. So we rep football guys every chance we get because I'm a part of that family as well. So we appreciate you, Jagger. <laughs> Absolutely, buddy. Uh, next week, we're going to be diving into wide receiver with the Stars of Tomorrow series with John Lobb from Player Profiler. John was on the show last year. So so Josh just keeps bringing the guests back. Uh, they Everybody did so well. Last no, year. actually, John was not on the Stars oh, of Tomorrow last year. Ago. He was on okay. the the celebrating FF episode that we did. Okay, like well, there you go. Segment. So our yeah. first new guest of the season, if you haven't seen yeah. John before, John lives and breathes college football, so he is going to be the perfect guest. Do you want to talk about energy on a podcast? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, man. <laughs> be ready, people. Absolutely. And so uh, look out for that episode. And then, Josh, you you dropped another note in there for me to something to mention, and I closed Yeah, just be soon. sure – make sure – We've mentioned it several times throughout. Just make sure you are subscribed to the Club Fantasy FFL YouTube channel. We have shows all the time now. Saturday mornings at 11 a.m. Eastern is our Mock It Like It's Hot. It's our, one of our mock draft shows. It's designed more so for teaching and coaching during the draft process. Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. is Dynasty After Party with Michael Ciccoli, uh, Joel Worth. They're kind of following what we're doing with the Stars of Tomorrow shows breaking it down a little bit more from a dynasty perspective. Um, Monday nights at 10 p.m., Mocking with the Stars. That's Gator J. That's Chris B. Um, They bring in the big guns, right? Because it's Mocking with the Stars. So you want to see how the pros are drafting? That's where you want to go to watch that. (laughs) Wednesday mornings, uh, who's your caddy? They took uh, another week off this week. But Kelly and Adam are hard at work preparing for the Masters. Yeah, already prepping for the next tournament. Yep. And then, as Ryan mentioned, back next week with uh, the wide receiver edition of the Stars of Tomorrow. That's right. Kelly's we'll busy. See. She's busy. So. Yes, she is. Oh, busy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she is. No, we appreciate We Kelly also, King. mind you, a little announcement a little bit later, but we do have another show that's going to be starting in a couple of weeks on Tuesday nights. Just nice. that up. I don't even know if I know about this. I'm sure I just forgot. <laughs> regardless, <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. We're talking wide receivers. You can follow Club Fantasy at Club Fantasy FFL on all of the social media sites. The website is clubfantasyffl.com. Always remember defense wins championships, offense wins fantasy football. We will see you next week.